Praise the Lord and welcome again to the State of the Union, the union between Jesus and his bride, the church. I'll get right into it. You know, in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus makes reference to something which we must pay attention to, especially as we look at the business, not just of tell my people to return to me, or more specifically, tell my people to return to the practice of my word. We must pay attention to things like this because, as we have said in several broadcast pasts, God does what God does by the agency of his word. What God is going to do, he starts to talk about, or he speaks it into existence. So if you are going to, as it were, walk with God, you will need to pay attention to his word. Because by paying attention to God's word, you get to know what God is up to. Per time, and therefore per season. Why? God establishes our times and seasons. The things by which we read even the weather were put there by God. And he said so in Genesis 1 14 that he put the sun and the moon and uh, all those guys up there for times and for seasons. The sun, the moon, the stars, the planetary bodies. So in, in Matthew 16 from verse 1, Jesus said, well, the Bible says, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he should show them a sign from heaven. To show them a sign from heaven. And you know, these people did this quite a lot with Jesus. In fact, in one place it is stated that the Greeks seek wisdom, but the Jews seek a sign. They're always looking for signs. Now they ask Jesus for a sign. Do something that will let us know who you are, for example, or that will confirm to us that you are who you say you are. And then in verse 2 it says, And he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. You cannot discern the signs of the times. And the reason for that is simple. Spiritual things are to be spiritually discerned. Only the spiritually discerning can understand the times. Like the children of Issachar, as we are told. They had understanding of the times and knew what Israel ought to do. So they had understanding of the time and they also had wisdom. Hmm. Now, I said that we have said so many things concerning the word of God. The word of God can set people in place. The word of God, like we said yesterday, brings promotion. Uh, or God brings promotion through the agency of his word. The word of God sets things into existence or sets things in their place. The word of God creates so much that the word of God can do. So much we have said in, in the past couple of weeks now about returning to the word of God. Returning to the practice of the word of God. So now it say, he says you know how to discern physical, material things. You know how to predict when it's going to be bad, foul weather, or when it's going to be fair weather. You know how to do that. But you can't predict, or you can't discern the times 
the signs of the times. Signs means that there are there are predicting markers. There are markers. There are pointers. There are things which can tell us what we are about. There are things which can tell us to be discerning. There are certain other things you need to know. I'm not talking about the gift of the Spirit, which is called discerning of the Spirit. That's a gift of the Spirit. A gift is a gift. You don't need to do anything or know anything to, for that to operate in your life. But to be discerning, you have got to know how to handle the Word of God, for example. So God says, return to the practice of my Word. And today, we examine the business of our times and our seasons. God announces and establishes our seasons by his word. There is something indicative of our times and seasons which God will necessarily give us. All right, I had a dream this morning, this night, this, this last night. I had a dream and I was uh, somewhere like a farm. And all over the place, Beautiful, shiny, fat, golden maize, fresh and succulent, all over the place. And I remember the, 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 the owners or the people who took care of the place had put some in a, in, a, in a cauldron, in a huge pot, to get some ready for me. And I came out of that drink. And as I began to wonder, I understood. But he showed it to me as luscious maize, already harvested, already harvested, fresh, especially the type that I just like, the type that I like, you know, the golden colored one. And as I began to look at these things, he began to speak about times and seasons. And I understood that by the dream he was telling me something personal. He was announcing something personal. And if you are discerning, you get it. I don't have to say that. God announces or establishes our seasons by his word. But as I began to meditate on, on this fact, certain bits of scripture began to float in my direction. So it says, for example, in 2 Timothy 3, it says, for example, this know also, 2 Timothy 3 from verse 1, it says, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. The word of God says one of the ways to know or recognize the last days would be the fact that there would be perilous times. That's a sign from the word of God. That's a pointer that the word of God is using to tell us how to discern our time. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, that's without self-control, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. And then it ends with having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And it says, from such, turn away. Now, I make no characterizations. I'll leave that to you. The point is, the Word of God is giving us clues about how to understand or discern our times. So, if you peer into the Word of God, you will need to ask yourself a question. The time in which I live right now, 2022, are these things in play? The number of people who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof, are they on the increase? Men being lovers of themselves or lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, is that a fact? 
are we in perilous times? Now, however you answer these questions, that at least should help you understand that the Bible is saying one thing or the other. For example, concerning David, he says in the, in the season when men go to war, there must have been a way the Israelites knew when to go to war. Because he says there is a time and a season for everything. I have noticed that over time God has dealt with me in cycles or if you like seasons of seven year cycles. It seems every seven years I experience a particular type of, I go through a particular type of experience with God. It may be on the high and then after seven years it starts to go on the low and it stays low for another seven years. I just noticed I just noticed so one time he said to me this was 1995 character development besides hope and truth I thought it was a topic or title for a book I have never written any such book it turned out to be not he was announcing to me that he wanted to start with me a season of character development besides just giving me hope and truth which he had been doing before this announcement. So from that time, I began to go through what the average individual would call harrowing circumstances. I didn't use the word suffering. I said harrowing circumstances. Uncomfortable, inconvenient. And these things began to challenge me to grow. Because the more I face these things, the more I challenge myself in the word of God, the more I challenge myself in the presence of the Lord, seeking understanding and answers. And I realized after a while that he was building character. So he first announced it. Now the problem might be that we are not attentive when he makes that kind of announcement in our lives. But I heard it and he said it wasn't about a book. So, the word of God says, in the last days, very lost times shall come. Can you see that today? Perilous times. Men being lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Can you see that? It's a yes or no issue. God says, tell my people to return to my word. When we return to his word, we will see things he already spoke about concerning our now. So that we understand our times and seasons. He says last days. Last days meaning the days just preceding the end. Whatever that may be. The end could be rapture so called. Or the actual second coming when he comes to land on Mount Olives as is written. The rapture precedes the second coming. We know that. But he says, the days before those two, these are the kind of things that will begin to happen on the earth. So the question is, does the earth look like what the Bible says right now? And if the answer is yes, then that should tell us that the time for the return of Jesus is at hand. If that is so, then that should define or in fact modulate your behavior or your response why do i say that some people say get ready now if i use the word get ready or, or prepare yourselves it's not because your preparation is going to determine whether or not jesus takes you but perhaps there is, there is an assignment that you have been given there is a task you have been given if you know that the master is coming then your most reasonable response will be to get about your task and finish it before he comes so that at least you can hear welcome my faithful servant or if you know you have been toying with your Christianity and in fact denying him by your behavior so you set yourself right otherwise he said if you deny me before me I will deny you before my father so the reason we need to know our seasons is because it helps us to key into what God is doing and God has already given us markers, pointers, indicators in his word I mean the written word 
but he can also point us at times and seasons by what he says to us so you may be going somewhere maybe you are going to like i said uh, some broadcast past i was coming to lagos in 2002 and he says i will keep you in lagos i didn't know in that in those words he was defining my next season the place i was leaving to come to lagos my my experience in that place was over he was saying that in that statement but i didn't get it immediately i do now 20 years on he was changing my season by that statement i'll keep you in lagos for some people it may be a direct instruction come out of your father's house come out of your country come out from among your people to a place where i will show you that's a change of experience change of season change many things change by that simple instruction he gave to Abraham. God changes our seasons and therefore our experience based on his word. The problem is, are we interested enough to discern our seasons by his word? So he says in Matthew 24, 12, still on the business of the last days, he says that iniquity shall abound. And the love of many shall wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold. Meaning that many shall turn from being lovers and followers of Jesus and shall begin to be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Do you see how what he said in Matthew 24, 12 rhymes with what the apostle said in 2 Timothy chapter 3? And the scripture is not done yet in the business as it were of predicting seasons the issue is are we discerning enough by the word of god to notice three different witnesses of scripture point at virtually the same experience men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of god in matthew he says the love of many shall wax cold but then in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, this is what he says. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day of Christ shall not come except there come a falling away first. What is the meaning of a falling away? For there to be a falling away, it means that the person that is falling used to stand somewhere and he has fallen away. What is the meaning of the love of many shall wax cold? What is the meaning of men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God? Why is God saying, tell my people to return to me? Because there seems to be a falling away that has already started to happen. So he's saying, tell my people to come back. They've started to fall away. Their love has started to go cold. The love of many has begun to wax cold. Why? Perilous times shall come. And then in Matthew 24 verse 10, there's something Jesus said. He said, and many shall be offended and they will begin to betray and hate one another. All talking about the last days, many shall be offended. When you are offended, what happens? You turn away from the offense or the offender. So offense comes to produce a turning away. So Jesus said, in the last days, many shall be offended. And in the same chapter, he said, the love of many that's verse 10, verse 12, it says the love, the love of many shall wax cold because of offense. It will become suddenly too hard to be a Christian. Almost all around you will be persecution, will be hard times just because you are a Christian. So the decisions we make for your faith will become more and more difficult to stand by as we become offended, as we become offended at Christianity. You say when offense comes by reason of the word, 
you need to look into Matthew chapter 13. Offense will come by reason of the word. You say persecution will come because of the word. And those who are not properly grounded shall fall away. My point is this. The word of God has given us clues to help us identify the times. To help us identify the season. The word of God has spoken about the season. The problem is, are we listening? So he says, come back to the operation of the word of God so that you can begin to discern your times and your seasons. Why? So you can order your steps properly. Not just because Jesus is coming, and that is a very big business. But perhaps because there are other things that the Lord wants to do with you. So let me ask a couple of questions and then we'll be done. He says in Matthew 20, 24, 10 that many shall be offended and then they will begin to betray and hate one another. And the very next verse, it says, and there shall be many false prophets to deceive. And I have to ask myself a question. Why will it be so easy to deceive? Because offense has already softened the heart. The offense has already prepared the heart to receive wrong information. So imagine, imagine you are already offended and somebody comes and begins to tell you something about your offender, which seems negative or which seems to say that he's not worthy of your trust. What happens? You say, oh, I already said it. I know from the way he behaved the other day, I, I already guessed that he cannot be trusted. And what happens? You fall away. That relationship is, is ruptured. Offense softened the heart for the false prophet to penetrate. So when Satan wanted to penetrate Eve's armor, if there was any ever such thing, what did he do? He first created offense. God does not want you to be like himself. He created the offense in the hope that she will be deceived into eating the fruit. We know the result. We know the result. Having said that to her, the Bible says, when she saw that the fruit was good, when she saw, how did she see? By reason of what Satan had said. God does not want you to be like him. That's why he said, don't eat it. The moment she heard that, probably meditated on it. Maybe it didn't, it wasn't a few seconds. Maybe it lasted a couple of days. I wasn't there. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say it. But the point is, immediately after she heard that, the Bible says, when she saw that it was good for food, or good, 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 good for this and that, she ate. But she had first been offended. God does not want you to be like him. So can you at least see there are, that there are already false prophets drawing the hearts of many away from Christ? Not unto themselves, as in the false prophet themselves, but drawing the hearts of many away from Christ unto the people themselves. So your heart that was once sold out to Christ is now turned from Christ unto itself. So you become lovers of yourself more than lovers of Christ. Which is a sign of the times anyway. So can you see, can you in that see the need for God sending out the call to return to him? Some are already on their way. Turning that is. Some have already turned completely. Some are about to turn. Otherwise, why the message? Tell my people to return to me. Now, in another place, it says that people will be giving in marriage and taking in marriage. And it says the days of the last days will be like the days of Noah. Have you ever considered how the days of Noah were and then compared it to today. In the days of Noah, while he built the ark, 
Sabbaths. There was much doubt of the word of God in the land. They were scorners. They scorned the word of God. They doubted the word of God in his mouth. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. They doubted the word of God in his mouth. They scoffed. How can you say that it is going to rain? They don't even know what... There has never been rain on the earth. That cannot be. So they scoffed. They scorned. And they continued like that even until the flood came. And so they were blown away. So they were lovers of themselves in spite of the preacher of righteousness. They remained lovers of themselves, eating and drinking, marrying and getting married. Or isn't that what we do at wedding feasts? The Bible says they knew not until the flood came. Do you know what it is to know not? It's not just a reference to ignorance. They knew not. They were carefree. They couldn't be bothered. They were carefree and nobody paying attention to the times or being sensitive to world events. And so the day of reckoning came upon them suddenly. Why do you think that the things that are written in the world, especially the ones that which speak of the times of the end, why do you think they were written that they were written? So that the end will not catch anybody unawares. But if we know it is still going to catch some people unawares because Jesus already said that those days would be like the days of Noah when people knew not because they refused to pay attention, for example, to the word of God. Hence we are saying today, return to the practice of the word of God so that you can discern the times and the seasons so that you can order your steps aright. People like me can only do so much. But you have to get off your seat and take a step forward and reach out to what is being handed out to you, an invitation to come back to God. There is a reason for these things, you know. There is a reason for these things. Could it be that God is calling attention to himself because of this season? Or in fact, in preparation for this season? I say, could it be that in these things that we are saying, could it be that God is calling attention to himself because of this season? Or in fact, in preparation for this season? Question. Could it be drawing attention to a return to himself because he knows that perilous times are about to befall us. Could he be drawing attention to himself because he knows what season is about to befall us and that only in him are we guaranteed safety? Is this why he's saying return to me? Is this why he's saying return to my word because he knows that it is only by, his, by and in or through his word that we will be guaranteed safety? Could he be asking us to return to him and his word knowing that deceivers are about to increase and our safety is guaranteed only in his word? For he says even in Matthew 24 that even the elect would be deceived. The word of God is our defense against deception. But only if you have already imbibed a habit of the practice of his word. I'll say that again. The word of God is our only defense against deception. But that is if you have first already imbibed a culture or a habit in the practice of the word of God. That's the only thing that will save you from the deception that is afoot, from the deception that is at hand, from the times that are upon us. God is discerning the seasons by his word. He says, return to my word. And my time is up. But we will do this again tomorrow. We will keep doing this. We will keep talking about these things. Tell my people to return to me. God wants us back. Because he wants us safe. But I'll see you again tomorrow. And until then, 
God bless.